Hello, welcome to the first module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. I am your instructor, Professor Jayanto Mukherjee of the Electrical Engineering Department of IIT Bombay. So, in this course, we will be discussing primarily microwave engineering. Uh, as you know, microwave engineering is a field in the electrical engineering uh, where we deal with uh, signals having a certain frequency range. This frequency range is usually uh, between 1 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz. Although both lower than this frequency and above uh, lower than 1 gigahertz and above 30 gigahertz also the principles that we study in this course can be applied. But usually this is taken as the boundary of the microwave engineering. Now the key aspect of microwave engineering is the wavelength of the signal. Uh, when we have signals uh, between 1 gigahertz and 30 gigahertz, the wavelength is in centimeters if we consider propagation to vacuum. So, if the uh, now for signals which are above 30 gigahertz, uh, there the wavelength becomes in millimeters, and again for very low frequency signals, the, the wavelength goes in uh, meters. So, microwave engineering is more or less this is how we can classify it that those range of frequencies for which the wavelength remains in centimeters. Uh, microwave engineering basically involves signals which lie between 1 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz. Uh, now, beyond 30 gigahertz, the wavelength is in millimeter, that is why it is called a millimeter wave range region and below 1 gigahertz we have the UHF and VHF ranges. So, this is more or less the range for which uh, we uh, for which microwave engineering is uh, defined. Now, what is so special about this range of frequencies? Uh, if we can take it with a simple example, consider a simple copper plate where a signal is applied who and say the voltage or current wave that is formed on this plate varies in this fashion. Now, what happens is now suppose say this is at say uh, the width and length of this uh, plate is 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter and uh, we know that uh, from normal KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, at low frequencies or DC, if a signal is applied, then the entire copper plate, as long as it is, as it is a good conductor, the entire copper plate will have the same voltage. But that is not the case here because here the wavelength of the signal is comparable to the dimension of the plate. That's why each point has a different voltage depending on the wave structure. So, that is one point. So, the traditional KCL and KVL uh, that we very often use for solving network problems at low frequency or uh, at DC are no longer applicable when we come to uh, when we uh, come to the microwave range of signals. Then now because uh, there is wave being transported. So, at these frequencies, we will have uh, have to deal with the wave nature of signals. So, the transmission can take place both along a conductor using the normal voltage current relationships that we know uh, Vi. If, the, if there is a voltage, there should be a current like that, or it can also transmit the power transmission can take place through wave propagation. So, when we have wave propagation, then we have to come across with many phenomena like bending, then so that is one effect, then there is the speed change that is when 
a wave travels from one media to another there is a change in the velocity of the wave and this causes uh, this in turn is one of the aspects of the wave nature of the signal so uh, so these are some of the effects and uh, the other uh, as i said since uh, propagation need not always have a current and voltage relationship so we can also have propagation through single conductor wave guides what i mean is that we know that for electrical power we traditional knowledge about electrical power transmission is that uh, there has to be a certain voltage difference between two points and the power is transmitted between say this point and this point by means of current and voltage but uh, as i said in microwave uh, frequencies that need not be the case so it can be a simple wave based transmission and since wave based transmission is happening so we need not have two conductors or or current and voltage present it can be say we have there is a certain conductor called a rectangular wave guide where if we incident we should power is incident microwave power is incident then that wave simply travels to this wave guide there is no special there, there is no need of a special second conductor so that is uh, another aspect of microwave uh, power transmission that it can happen the power transmission can happen using a single conductor so single conductor transmission so then so then if kcl and kvl are not totally applicable for microwave engineering then what is applicable so the rigorous way of solving this is using maxwell's laws so we know the four uh, famous maxwell's law now i am not going to uh, i am not going to go into detail about uh, maxwell's laws you can find it in any electromagnetic uh, textbook but uh, what we will cover is uh, uh, what we will cover is the solutions of these maxwell's laws so the solutions of the maxwell's laws So this is the fundamental principle behind solving all microwave engineering problems that since kcl and kvl are not applicable so we can directly apply maxwell's laws to every instance and by applying the maxwell's laws to a particular wave guide say a, what we call a rectangular wave guide like this we get three types of solutions first one is called tem waves second is called te waves and the third is called tm waves the tem waves were are waves which do not have any component of the electric or magnetic field along the direction of propagation so suppose our direction is of propagation is along the plus z direction and x and y are the other coordinate axis then in tem waves we have ez equal to hz equal to 0 in te waves which are also known as transverse electric waves we have no component of the magnetic field along the sorry we have no component of the electric field along the direction of propagation but the component of magnetic field along the direction of propagation will be non zero and tm waves are the converse that is there will be no component of the magnetic field along the direction of propagation but the electric field along the direction of propagation will have to be non zero now what are the significances of these three types of waves 
Now, TEM waves, first thing we have to note about TEM waves is that they are applicable only for two conductive waveguides. Only for two conductor waveguides and there is a single solution for TEM waves that is we cannot have there is only a single TEM wave that can propagate through a medium for TE and TM we can have multiple solutions for TEA and TM, so we can have multiple solutions. Multiple solutions means there can be more than one TE or TM wave passing through the same medium. The other property characteristics of a TE or TM wave is they have something called a cutoff frequency. Cutoff frequency means a frequency below which the TE or TM wave cannot transmit and the mode or that solution of the TE or TM waves which has the lowest cutoff frequency that is known as the dominant mode. So, that is the definition the, the mode that has the lowest cutoff frequency is called the dominant mode. So, these are this is the kind of the fundamentals of you know how uh, the we can go ahead to understand the operation of various microwave devices these are the fundamentals that we have to know. Now, coming back to this slide. So, F c is the cutoff frequency. Now, let us take an example. Say we have what we call a cylindrical waveguide. Uh, so, let us first start with a what we call a parallel plate waveguide. A parallel plate waveguide is a waveguide where we have two layers of metal, two infinite layers of metal separated by a distance d. Now, the electric and magnetic field solutions for this parallel plate waveguide are given like this. So, for the TEM mode, these are my solutions. This is of course, obtained by from the Maxwell's equations. where eta is the intrinsic impedance and V 0 is the voltage between the plates. And k the propagation constant is given like this. The TM solutions are given as, so if we again apply the Maxwell's laws to find the TM wave solutions, they are given like this.
this is the solution for the TM wave. Now, as we can see, because of this constant n that appears inside this sinusoidal term, uh, what happens is that there are many solutions of uh, Ez for various values of n. We can have various solutions of Ez, and uh, now the mode that has the lowest uh, uh, cutoff frequency will have the uh, will have the low will be called the dominant mode. So, we will have uh, for a parallel plate waveguide, we will have modes like E t E 1, T m 2, T m 0, T e 0, T m 1 and so on. So, these are the various modes T 1, T m 2, T m 0, T 0, T m 1 depending on what the solution for the T uh, whether we are taking the T m or T e solution and the value of n. So, in the same way that we had these solutions for the T m mode, we will also have a solution for the T e mode. Now, if we uh, for a you know as I said there is a uh, certain cutoff frequency for each uh, waveguide and if we draw a relationship between this beta and omega. So, even for a, uh, for a parallel plate waveguide, we saw that beta is equal to k square minus k c square and then k c k is given as 2 pi upon lambda whole square minus uh, k c is given by n pi upon d and we know that uh, 2 pi upon lam lambda is inversely proportional to omega. So, using this relationship if we plot a curve between omega versus beta what we get is something like this. Now, this is the line uh, for when omega is directly proportional to beta as in the case of the uh, T e m wave. Now, for T e m wave we saw k or beta is equal to omega times square root of mu epsilon. So, then for the T e m wave the relationship between omega and beta is a straight line, but for this T e and T m waves T m modes we saw that the relationship is given by this kind of line. Now, this what is this beta? Beta we saw is kind of we can define it as 2 pi upon lambda g where lambda g is the apparent uh, apparent wavelength. So, while lambda is the actual input wavelength of the input signal lambda g is the apparent wavelength inside the uh, media or the device. Now, this kind of curve as from this relationship this uh, this relationship that I showed just now between beta and omega beta and lambda and since lambda is proportional to omega uh, we can write this equation. So, this uh, curve that we obtained is called the dispersion curve. It is called the dispersion curve because if this curve was a straight line like this then there would have been no dispersion that is all frequencies would have been traveling with the same frequency uh, same velocity. But because of this bend present in the curve, first of all we know that there are certain frequencies which are forbidden. So, this is called the electromagnetic band gap which are the forbidden frequencies and the phase velocity or the velocity with which a phase a constant phase of the wave no goes is equal to the chordal slope that is the line slope of the line joining any point 
to the origin. So, the slope of that line is the phase velocity and the tangential velocity slope of the tangent to any point gives what we call the group velocity. Now, group velocity can be considered like the velocity of with which an envelope or the say an amplitude modulated if you have an amplitude modulated signal then the velocity with which the entire envelope of the amplitude modulated signal travels that is called the group velocity. Whereas, phase velocity is the apparent velocity with which the constant phase of a single frequency travels. So, coming back to our curve here, if the group velocity is constant, then all there will be no distortion or dispersion between frequencies. Because the group velocity is not constant and keeps changing as we go along this curve, there is dispersion or distortion present in the signal. Hence the name dispersion diagram. So, these are some of the fundamentals uh, as far as the various types of solution and uh, types of modes that are present in microwave devices. Let us go to a circuit perspective. Now, what happens is now when I said that whenever the wavelength of a signal is comparable to the dimensions of that circuit. Uh, you have these microwave distributed line effect, what we call distributed line effects. So, what that means is that you cannot consider that line or say if we go back to our rectangular plate, you can no longer consider this plate as a single conductor or a lumped element. We have been familiarized with lumped elements at low frequencies where the wavelength is much larger compared to the dimension of the circuit. But when the dimension of the circuit is comparable to the wavelength of the signal, we can no longer approximate everything with lumped elements. We have to consider the impedance at each point as the wave travels. So, that is why this distributed line effects are a prominent feature of microwave engineering and that happens because of this low uh, wavelength. So, two, two major things about microwave engineering, one is the wave nature for which we have already obtained the solution and the second is the distributed effects. So, for the wave nature we have already seen the solution, let us see how we can, uh, how we can uh, deal with the circuit which has these distributed effects. So, to deal with the distributed effect, let us consider a long transmission line which has L and C as the inductance, series inductance and shunt capacitances per unit length. What this means is there are small small inductances all along the length of this line and there are also small small capacitances all along the length of this line. And uh, the the problem is to find a solution when we have such very small capacitances in shunt and series inductance is present. Now, as I said you cannot approximate this with a single uh, lumped, uh, lumped impedance. Why? Because it will be like solving an infinitely long ladder network which is not possible. Instead if we just take a very small or differential element d z okay, and represent it like this. So, this is a very small element where the induct series inductance and series capaci shunt capacitances are given like this. So, now if we apply the Kirchhoff's current law, now to this very small element which, which we are assuming can be divided no further, to this element <coughs> if we apply the Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws, then we get equations like this.
So, this is the first equation using KVL and using KCL we get this as the equation. So, here z and y are the impedances and admittances for unit length, where for a lossless line z will get converted to omega l and y will be converted to omega c. So, now if we solve these two equations, the solution that we get, the equation that we get on solving these two simultaneous equations, the differential equation that we get is something like this. Sorry, this z dz is not there. This is a homogeneous equation. If you can ignore this scribble mark, this is a homogeneous equation. Uh, the solution of these, uh, any of these two homogeneous equation will give the solution of both bz and iz, and the solutions are given as. So, this is the solution. The first thing we note that the voltage along the, so z here z is like if this is our transmission line, then at the beginning we have z equal to 0 and at the end we have z equal to L. And uh, V z uh, that is the voltage at any point along this transmission line uh, is given as the sum of two waves two exponential terms. So, these are like waves and the current I z is equal to the difference of two waves and this z 0 is a constant, uh, it is a constant for a lossless line, but for a uh, lossy line it is equal to this equation. So, these are two new uh, terms that come z 0 and gamma, gamma is called the propagation constant. and z0 is called the characteristic impedance. So, we will see that these two terms, this gamma and z0, they completely characterize a transmission line. Now, there are some special cases uh, possible. For example, for lossless lines, uh, z0 will be simply given as the ratio of L upon C and will be constant irrespective of the frequency. And for uh, the gamma lossless line, the value of gamma will be given like this. So, this is again we see the solution is non-dispersive because gamma is directly proportional to omega as we had seen. Uh, one interesting uh, uh, relation that often comes is what is the total complex power transmitted the complex power transmitted can be calculated from the equations that I just showed to be equal to this 
this term is the real power transmitted or the loss happening in the circuit and this term is the imaginary power or stored power. So, these were some basic concepts about uh, microwave engineering and how we deal with the problems that come up when we have microwave devices. So, there are two major uh, features of microwave engineering. One was the wave nature for which we had the solutions, various wave, wave solutions like the TEM, PE and TM waves and the other is the distributed effects for which we had to solve the transmission line equations. Now, on solving the transmission line equation, we saw that we have some new terms like the propagation constant, uh, characteristic impedance. Then the voltages and currents had two independent terms like V plus and V minus. V plus is usually referred to as the incident wave and V minus as the reflected wave. Now, microwave engineering is all about how we manipulate the incident and reflected waves. In the next module, uh, we shall be further discussing some of the parameters of associated with microwave engineering. Thank you.